Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment of our program brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. The weather is starting to improve, and many of you will be taking on home improvement projects in the weeks and months ahead. Start your project with a visit to A.G. Hines Company. The biggest contractors in East Tennessee trust them, and you should too. And with their prices, you can afford to do just that. A.G. Hines Company, they're easy to find. They're on Hines Street. That's the, that's the beauty. When you've been around for 101 years, they named the streets after you. So Hines Street, downtown Knoxville, you can find them online. You can call them. Good family company for 100 years. A.G. Hines Company. All right. College basketball is a tournament sport. We all know that. It's what people remember. Uh, the, the example I always go back to is the 2010 Tennessee team. Uh, the Vols lost nine games that year. They finished 8-5 and five down the stretch of that regular season. Lost in the SEC tournament 74 to 45. I'm sure you remember Kentucky just drubbing you guys. <laughs> and then, of course, all that anybody remembers, that's the team that went to the Elite Eight. So the eight and five finish, the drubbed in the conference by 30 to Kentucky. Nobody remembers that. It's just the Elite Eight. That's what people remember. Except for me, I'm here always throwing the, the dirt. <laughs> but Rick Barnes doesn't have the reputation of a good co uh, tournament coach. That's just not his thing. And that's not a great deal when the, the whole sport is based on what people remember happening in a tournament. Let's take a look at his record here. All right, this is in the NCAA tournament. 357 active Division I coaches are out there. 11, only 11 out of 357 have multiple Final Four appearances. More than Barnes won. Well, that's pretty good. People always say, well, he's only been to one Final Four. Well, there's only 11 guys. There are only 11 guys who've been to more than that. So he's in really good company there. And when you look at winning percentage in the tournament, though, and this is minimum 20 games, he's number 21 in the tournament in terms of winning percentage. He's 24 and 24. It's 500 all time in the tournament. That's not so good. He's fifth in the SEC right now. Calipari and Howland, and Howland mainly from his UCLA days, they have great records. Pearl, 15 and 10. It's better than Barnes. Cream, about the same. It's right at 500. Uh, now let's take a look at, and, and also, I'll just throw in, you, you went to the right graphic there, Chris. Thank you, my director. Uh, but I was going to say, Barnes has also been to an NIT quarterfinal, an NIT semifinal, lost in the first round of the NIT, lost in the first round of a CBI. So four other goofy tournaments in there. Barnes in league tournaments. 32 conference tournaments in his career. 20 times he's reached the semifinals. Okay, you reach the semifinals 20 out of 32 tournaments. That tells me you're not a bad coach. Not a bad co tournament coach to do that. Finals, one out of every three tournaments. He makes the finals. That's pretty good. One tournament win, though. Never won the Big 12. Uh, number, seeded number one a number of times. So you can go either way on this, and then let's do what everybody at Tennessee does anyway, and let's compare it to Bruce Pearl. Conference tournaments, 15. When you look at percentages, they've both reached just about the same number of semifinals. Barnes a little bit better. Finals, Pearl's a hair better, 33% to 31%. But tournaments won. He's got three wins. Rick Barnes' numbers aren't horrible there. But when you look at it and you add up NCAAs, NITs, CBIs, and all those conference tournaments, that's 60 tournaments in his career. He's won one. So my question. Vince Ferrara. Is Rick Barnes a bad tournament coach? Well, I'm not going to say he's a bad tournament coach. I, I think there's obviously things that make you wonder about this team having success based on those numbers. But um, it, sometimes coaches are better with certain types of teams. And the obvious comparison to Bruce Pearl, mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, Bruce Pearl has had some teams that maybe people didn't believe in and then um, and then succeeded with them, not just at, at Tennessee, but at his other stops as well. And when sometimes you don't perform well when you have those expectations on you. So I wonder if that was a, a factor. Uh, you know, you have to you have to wonder about the, the style of that that grinds on them. I think they have a really good such a good staff with their scouts. I think they're put together to to be a good, successful tournament type of team where you turn around those scouts and you know pregame make those adjustments. The the question is is this team hasn't seemed to make great in-game adjustments and having answers. So I wonder if from that standpoint that that trend that we saw there with those numbers will continue. But I'm not going to say bad because he's had still had some success. Jerron? Well, I'll say. The burden, of, the burden of expectations is usually the downfall to all teams. And so when you have expectations, it's kind of hard sometimes to surpass those expectations, even in the, uh, the eyes of your greatest fans. Mm -hmm. And so 
what we have to focus is what makes a good tournament coach. And so if he can be detail oriented and intentional throughout the game, can he be present on the sideline and like as to Josh's point, make those game times adjustment, listen to the coaches, take that advice. And then if he also can be disciplined in the chaos, it'll bode well for our future moving forward, especially uh, if we want to win more than just one game. All right, not a bad tournament coach, not a bad tournament coach. Mark Pankratz, 60 career tournaments, one career win. Is he a bad tournament coach? Well, again, I know you say 357 active coaches, but that doesn't take into account all the many, many coaches that have, have uh, failed at the high level of big Power 5 basketball over the course of his 20 years of coaching at Texas and, and UT. Yeah. Um, so it, that, that puts him in even a finer line of margin of those that have won the, that amount of championships. And so I, I think now if you take that out, uh, and you compare it to other people that have been in, in power fives for that long, um, Coach Barnes is a, is a really good coach. I, I don't think you can say he's a great tournament coach, but he's a really good coach. And, um, you know, I, I think that when you look at Pearl's um, 03 05, having been on that team and, and the Rising League when he won the championships there, we are by far the most talented team, top to bottom, in that league those years. Um, it, I think the other frustration is you look at Pearl's one SEC championship win. It was him on an Auburn sideline, on an Auburn sidelines, and not a Tennessee sidelines, which frustrates fans a little bit. Um, but I think when you look at Barnes, how many coaches have been at one institution for as long as Barnes was at Texas? That's another thing of staying power, man. Like this day and age, more time, more. Um, frustration, more challenges, more money is lost, more poor decisions are made with constant turnover. And I think sometimes with Barnes and what he, what he did at Texas, there's a lot to be said there of, of how long he was there. Yes, he didn't win as many championships as, as some other places have, but he has been a very successful coach in his time at Texas and at UT. I think there's another way of looking at it as well, and that is, that is this, would you rather be the program that is typically going to be in the tournament. You may not, you may not always make the run. You may not look at it and say, oh, well, we're going to be up there with Krzyzewski and Izzo this year, but you're going to be in the tournament. Or would you rather have the guy who, well, we could be in probation. We could be in the tournament. We could not be in the tournament. If we get there, though, we got a shot. With his style, we got a shot if we get there. Would you rather be consistent in pretty much getting there, which I think Barnes most years does get there. You saw the numbers. Or would you rather be inconsistent in getting there but have a better shot once you're in it at possibly moving further? And to, if it's me, I think anybody that, that runs a school would say, give me the tournament every year. I think fans would say, I want a championship. I'd sell all these other years for one. They don't mean it because as soon as you win the title, if you don't win it the next year, they're mad at you. Yeah. But there's, there's a fine line there. You get something with Barnes, which is consistency, which if anybody who's been here for 20 years covering Tennessee basketball or 30 years knows, there's been a lot of years where you didn't even come close to the tournament. So. Well, and the other thing about recruiting, right? I mean, like you're consistently starting to recruit better and better players. How many programs out there that, that, that change in the direction of the win with who their head coach is going to be consistently recruit well? Not many, right? But yeah. he's got consistent, and he's building a recruiting pipeline that if we can keep saying, yes, who knows, he may never get to a Final Four at Tennessee, but he's going to be in NCAA tournaments. He's going to win, he's going to win a lot of games, and, and, and he is a very, very good basketball coach. One thing that's interesting about the uh, back to the tournaments being too much, it's too important in the sport. The sport needs to do something to fix it, and I don't know how it does it because March Madness is huge, but it needs to do something to where everything doesn't ride on the conference tournament because the regular season is just pretty much useless at this point. Point being, uh, the 2005 team that you were a player on in Milwaukee, uh, you were a player on that team, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys won the Horizon League by one point over Detroit. Mm -hmm. All right, one point. You guys don't win that. You're not in the NCAA tournament. Correct. You don't get to the Sweet 16. Mike Hamilton more than likely doesn't hire Bruce Pearl here. You never come here. You never come here. If you guys don't win, if you guys miss one more bucket in that championship game, you two aren't on the show today. And who knows where Tennessee basketball is. Too much rides on the tournaments in that sport, in my view. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. I know people beat Barnes up for the, uh, for the record. I thought let's throw it out there, and you can take it either way. All right, when we come back, uh, should Tennessee 
be copying the Alabamas of the world who are looking more toward the NBA, more analytics driven. Is that where the sport's going? Does Tennessee need to make that adjustment? We'll discuss that quickly and then we'll have keys for Tennessee versus Florida. Come on back on the sports. Show.